Hey guys, so for this video I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to make a micro USB continuity tester. Um, this device will help me identify whether or not micro USB cables are broken or if they have data pins. Um, certain micro USB cables that are out there are advertised as charge and sync. Sync being um, data wires basically. It allows you to hook it up to a PC and allows your PC to communicate with whatever device you have hooked up at the other end, such as a smartphone. And uh, that's the main reason for this because I've bought a few micro USB cables that have been advertised as charge and sync and they only charge which is very frustrating so this little device will help with that. It'll also help detect whether or not wires on the inside of it are broken or if they are sharing connections. Sometimes with manufacturers they like using uh, data pins to supply power to as well like sometimes um, I'm not sure if it's by accident or if they just do it because they're cheap cables but I've seen micro USB cables as well as other ones that have the power of uh, you know, 5 volts positive soldered to the 5 volts positive pin and then also soldered to the data negative pin right next to it. Now normally this doesn't harm a smartphone, uh, but it is really sloppy and this will help me determine whether or not that is the case by pulsing the outputs. Um, speaking of outputs, what's going to be driving this is a 4017 circuit right here. It's a very simple circuit. It's going to be a 4017 decade counter. It counts from 0 to 9 or 1 to 10. And the clock signal driving it is a 555 timer. I'm going to clean up the circuit in a little bit. This is just pretty much for me to see the wiring. Um, but every time the decade counter outputs, uh, uh, one of its outputs go high according to the sequence, it'll have the output travel through the USB ports via a micro USB cable. And if all four outputs light up using LEDs in a corresponding order, then the micro USB cable is good. Now, if the outputs don't light up, or if there's three outputs that light up out of four, or if only two of them light up, then that means the cable is either broken and or it doesn't have a charge, and uh, or it doesn't have a sync tether to it, um, which I have seen on multiple occasions. Uh, I have the circuit hooked up right over here on my breadboard. It's a very simple circuit. It's probably operating in about half a second, maybe. Now, originally I didn't want to use a 555 timer to generate the clock signal. I wanted to add a manual push button, but every time I went to push the button, it would act weird and shift the outputs a little bit faster. So I figured... Just add the 555 timer to save some stress. It's a very simple circuit. The outputs right here are going to the LEDs. It's not in order right now because the outputs on the 4017 aren't in order. But when this is all said and done, these outputs will be traveling through the micro USB ports via a micro USB cable and it'll be lighting up in a sequence order, which is going to help identify whether or not micro USB cables are broken, in, are intact, or just missing the sync capability. So let's solder up the circuit on the breadboard, and I will finish this schematic. I'll tighten up a little bit, and I'll review it at the end of this video. Okay, so I finished soldering up the circuit on a piece of strip board that I had lying around. Unfortunately, all I had was strip board. I don't have any uh, just standalone through hole stuff that's not connected, which I would have preferred if it was just perforated board, but unfortunately, all I had was strip. And uh, the bad part about that is I had to use some jumper wire to complete traces, and connections and actually cut etches of the copper to make it work but it does work it just turned out a little bit uh jumpy here i had to use some jumpers i didn't really want to could have put these on the bottom but i didn't want to i just did it the way i did it because it was a little bit easier i wanted to knock this thing out as quickly as i could and i think i did a pretty good job on it i have a 5 volt usb input right here um this is a fun little cable i got that i uh found at a like a some sort of like thrift store type thing. It's a micro USB host cable inside of a normal USB cable. So you can plug it in to a USB port or use your phone as a supply if it supports host, which is really cool. I decided to use this because I wanted to, uh, to be able to uh, pretty much test USB cables before I buy them now because some, some places I go to actually have them lying out so I can just plug it into this and make sure it works. And uh, if we look at the board closely, we'll see the uh, 4017 right here. 555 timer with all of its components, the four LEDs that will blink in synchronous order, and uh, the output resistors right here. The output goes in a, in a synchronized way through the USB, and then it's tethered uh, via USB cable to a micro USB, and the outputs from this will go through the cable and actually turn on the LEDs one at a time. Uh, this way we will know if the USB cable is working or not. Um, and on the back of it is just a bunch of wiry mess. Uh, kind of nice looking, I think, though. I did a decent good job on it, I guess. 
Um, I could have saved a lot more room too, but I have a bunch of scrap pieces of perf board lying around that I don't really need any more of it. So now we can test to see if this thing actually works. Um, I'm going to be using my phone as a power supply for it. And I have two micro USB cables on hand that I'm going to be testing. I actually have quite a bit lying around in my house, but I only got these two right now. Uh, the one in question is this guy right here. This one is sold as a charge and sync, but I've only gotten it to charge on my phone. And this one right here I know works. It's a really nice one I picked up for like $3. It's like six feet and braided. I don't really understand the uh, appeal to six feet USB cords because the I've never really had a good success rate with them. That they don't charge as quick because DC doesn't travel distances all that great. So I don't really understand the allure with them. But uh, this works for my tablet and stuff. Use it to charge that. Not not necessarily on my phone, which has like a uh, ten amp hour um aftermarket battery in it that's why it's so freaking you know thick it's got this custom case to accommodate for it so i don't really use that for this uh but let's hook up the micro usb end it just slides right out like this is a really cool connector i got it out of a little stupid selfie fan like <laughs> um i found these little fans in like this closeout bargain sale store um, and they were selling these USB fans that plug into your phone or into a USB port for hair blowing selfies. I'm not kidding. That was the selling point. It was pretty fucking stupid, not gonna lie. But I saw this connector and I kind of like fell in love. Like I just had to buy them. I bought like three of them and I used uh, one of these connectors to replace a head on a flash drive, which I actually did an instructable about. So if you want to learn more about these, I'll link that in the description. But let's plug in the host on into my phone. Uh, the host on this is a little bit touch and go on this one anyways because the uh, the host end on this one actually ended up bending a little bit and it kind of made it a little bit weird. But let's get the good cable hooked up. This one I know works. It was an unnecessarily loud noise that just came about. Let's plug this guy in. We're still plugging this. And then the micro USB. Now, with any luck, the LEDs will light up one at a time, which it does. So this means that we actually have a good USB cable because it's passing all four outputs through the USB cable. Now, the reason it just shut off is because this USB is really touch and go. Like I said, I, I think I might have like come close to breaking the head on it when I removed this one, which is unfortunate because a few of them actually turned out really fine. The other two that I removed turned out really fine. This one didn't, so I might have to replace this power cable eventually. But the normal USB on it works just fine. Just the uh, host one's kind of touch and go because it's just a little bit bent. But other than that, you can see that the cable is working just fine. All four wires are intact. And uh, like I mentioned before, I wanted to pulse all four connections for continuity one at a time to ensure that they're connected independently. Um, like I said, some manufacturers like to tack on extra solder to um, bridge the pins together. which I really don't know why they do that, but it, it does happen. So now, let's test this cord. This uh, micro USB that I bought for probably about the same price. They're abundant. They're everywhere. I don't know. I just pick them up as I go because sometimes I need them. And they're cheap. Well, let's test this one. This is the one that would only charge my phone. But uh, let's plug this guy in. And see what LEDs light up. Now the orientation I have the LEDs in. I should probably mention this. It is power, data, data, power. Not too sure of the orientation offhand, but it goes uh, pin one from the USB to positive, and from there you get the uh, synchronous organization. So if only the two outer LEDs light up, that means power is connected. But if the two inner LEDs lights up, or it doesn't light up rather, that means that the uh, sync wires aren't there, or possibly they're broken. But we'll find that out too. I'm going to chop this cable in half just to see. Let's plug in the micro. All right. 
And as you can see, only two of the LEDs light up. So that means only two of the four signals from the 4017 are getting through the micro USB connection right here. So that means that two of the wires that are supposed to be in this connector, or this USB cable, are either broken, which is unlikely because it's two of them, or they're missing, which is highly likely because it's a cheap cable that was an off-brand, no-name thing. So, uh, this is a perfect tool to identify problems with micro USB cables. You can also make it uh, adaptable for other USB cables and even Ethernet cables too. Uh, but let's take a closer look at this cable real fast. I'm just gonna chop it. I'm just gonna chop it right about here, and we're gonna see what's going on on the inside of it. I don't really care about this that much because it's a piece of crap. But yep, there's only two wires on the inside, red and black. So it supports power, so that means they lied in advertising. This was supposed to be a charge and sync. Uh, so that's pretty annoying. But whatever, I got this tool now that can help me identify whether or not the cables are worth buying. So let's review the schematic on this, and I'll explain it one more time. Okay, so I whipped up the uh, schematic in Eagle. Um, I did this really quick, so I apologize if some of the alignments and stuff are a little bit off. Normally when I make schematics using Eagle, I make it as perfect as I possibly can. So I just like it that way. But this is a simple one that I knocked out in probably like five minutes. But let me explain it again. For the device I just made, we're using a 555 timer and a 4017. The 555 timer generates a square wave output that actually enables the uh, sequence to be activated on the 4017 via the clock signal. The output uh, pulse width modulation is determined by these two resistors and the capacitor up here. These values can be altered for a faster uh, output or a slower output. But I use 33K for both resistors and a 10 microfarad cap uh, capacitor just to get that perfect timing, which is like a half a second. Again, I didn't put a lot of thought into that. I just kind of shot from the hip with it and it kind of worked really well. The output of the timer, pin 3, is going to the clock like I just said. It has a pull down resistor on the output and the clock to kind of make sure that the uh, it's always active low so that way when it pulses high it's a nice um, steady on signal because like when I wanted to make this originally I wanted to just have the 4017 and a push button going from 14 uh, to 5 volts positive so that way I can manually clock it but it would not work that way it was a little bit finicky so I just decided to say screw it and throw in one of the million timers I have lying around now the output of the 4017 is over on the right side right here. For some reason the the uh, symbol I picked off of Eagle Cat's library is missing the power and ground on the 4017. I didn't look into it enough because I don't really care. I'm not going to make a board out of this or anything. Uh, but uh, let's just assume they're there because they have to be. So the output of this is going to a USB port right here after the or before, yeah, after the uh, four resistors right here. I don't have a value on these because I think it's... Uh, I think I, they might be like 300 ohm or something like that. I just kind of picked what I had closest to what I needed and used it. And over here we have a micro USB, which is actually a mini USB, because um, that was the fastest one I could find, but it works for this purpose, that is connected to the LEDs on the output. So this right here is tethered to this with the USB cable you actually want to question. And this will allow us to clock the... Uh, 4017 with the 555 timer and sequence each one of these pins so only one of them's on at a time and then that signal will carry over through the micro USB cable and illuminate these LEDs one at a time thus telling us that the cable is intact or broken or possibly just charge and not sync um, which is more common than you, than you would actually think so with about um, I don't know, $2 worth of components, you can make a nice little device that will help you identify whether or not your cables are garbage or if you should purchase a cable in question. Um, so this is a really fun project. I whipped up in about, I don't know, an hour, so I kind of apologize if there's any errors in it or anything like that. But uh, it was a lot of fun to do. I just did this in my free time and whatnot. Uh, so this is a what I would consider a beginner project. Um, so if you have any questions about it, feel free to message me. Other than that, I hope you liked this video, and thanks for watching.